Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with our Bible study for tonight. And then we want to continue on in our series and our consideration of the Isle of Discourse. And again, just want to remind you that this was Jesus' last public discourse. Again, he spoke privately after this, but this was his last public um, discourse. And again, he's answering these questions. What will be the sign of your coming and what will be the end of the age? And so we want to continue to invite your attention to the gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter number 24. Chapter number 24. And while you're turning and getting yourself prepared, we, again, we want to welcome those that join us by way of Facebook live and also that will join us later by way of youtube and by other social media platforms and again we are so grateful for the for the faithful that are continuing to join us by way of zoom amen and again we see that that we we have our 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 it ministry amen that their fingers must be getting wild because they continue to make us look good Amen. But we, again, we let you know that we appreciate everybody and everybody's participation and everybody's support. So we're in the, the Gospels recorded by Matthew, chapter number 24. And I just want to read our main text for tonight. It's verse number 51. And the King James Version of the Scripture says, And shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Amen. We have entitled our time for the night, Weeping and Gashing of Teeth, part number two. I mean, part number two. So without further ado, let us pray and invite God's presence as we continue our journey. And as the Bible said, in all of your getting, let us get an understanding. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we continue, God, to thank you, God, for what you are in our lives on tonight. Father God, we ask, oh God, once again, God, that you just show yourself so faithful as we open up our Bibles that you allow us to open up our hearts and also our minds. And Father God, we ask, oh God, that we're so open, even while we may be so exposed, that you insert your word into our hearts, into our mind that we would know, understand, and do what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And we all want to say amen. Amen. So weeping and gashing of teeth. Amen. We, we kind of went a little appetite on last week and we're talking about heaven and we're talking about death judgments. And so I really want to dig into this, to this judgment. So our outline tonight is really very simple. First of all, I want I want to I want to hype for your consideration the principles that I need to know, or the principles that you and I need to know. And then secondly, as time will permit, the judgments that we should be concerned with. And so we're, we're going to get to it later in our study. The Bible outlines basically seven major judgments. And we're just going to talk about two on tonight again when we get to chapter number 25 towards the end and we're going to get into the judgment and we're going to walk away through it and again we're going to strive to get an understanding of really what god is saying unto us and so first of all so first of all okay turn with me i mean to to, to luke's gospel chapter number 19. luke's gospel chapter number 19. And so here Jesus is given a familiar, he continues to give this whole thing of a king or of a ruler or of a dignitary going away and he leaves his servants, part of his goods, how they were to manage. And always the correlation is what? Is that Jesus has went away and he has given you and me gifts, talents, and abilities. And so, so we see that some of us are using our gifts, talents, and abilities to produce more. But some of us are hiding our gifts, but hiding our abilities, or really not using it for the, for the goodness of the gospel, for the goodness of the kingdom. And so we're in, we're in Luke's gospel, 
chapter number 19, and let's pick up our reading. It's a little bit long, but I want you to get the gist of it. But let's pick up our reading in verse number 11. And it says, and they, and King James says, and as they heard these things, he added them and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And, and, and that, 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 that's powerful right now because, again, I've, I've, I've shared with you that some have, have texted me, have messaged me throughout our Facebook and through other things, and that, that how I was being accused of leading people astray. Because why? Because Jesus has been two, three thousand years, he has not come back. And so, but again, the Bible declares that, that many people thought that he was going to come right away. And as I told you before, we talked about this before, that the Bible declares two advents. But when you but but in the Old Testament, this was called a mystery. And I understand that a mystery in the Bible is not a who done it. It's not like a Columbo or or murder mystery type that type, that type of thing. But a mystery is something that was once he hidden, but now it is revealed. And so it was hidden about two advents of Christ, but now it is revealed. So because he did not come immediately, people, as we talked about last week, people began to scoff and, and criticize it and do all a like manner and, and not to be faithful unto the things that God had placed in their hand. But verse 12 says, And he said, Therefore a certain nobleman went into a, went to a, a country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Let me pause right there. So this word occupy, it, 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 one, it, it somehow translates to do business, meaning that, 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 that as, as he left his servants his good, as he left them money, they were to invest it, but guess what? Not to just to do it one time, but to continue on and continue on and continue on. How many know that if you and I are really going to be good at something, if we're really going to be a success in this life, you know, we can't be a one-hit wonder. We can't try something one time and expect it to happen. So many times so we have to go through this process of trial and error, of trial and error. And so so, so if I had time, you know, I, I will walk you through. And so, for example, you know, we know that, that, that Mr. Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, have, have, have built one of the biggest stadiums, you know, in, in, in the world and, and, and so and so but there was a time when Mr. Jones said that he couldn't write a check meaning that he could physically write a check but would nobody honor it why because his credit was so bad but 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 guess what he didn't get to build the Dallas Cowboys Stadium overnight there was some trial and error there was some setback there was some fails and so this is what Jesus is talking about that I'm bright until I come. Guess what? Even if I'm trying to do I'm doing the thing that God has called me to do, guess what? It's not gonna always work out the first time. I have to continue to occupy, I continue to work this thing out. I have to continue that that, that, that there's a phrase that said, I never fail. I either win or I learn. And so many times you and I have to go through the process of learning how to perfect our gift. Learn how to affect our crowd so that we can be at a point of giving God glory and giving him praise. And so verse 14 says, But his citizens hated him and sent messages after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these, these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading, by trading. And so again, it was not just a one trade. I remember I was, I was years ago uh, when, I was, when I was working for Frito, uh, I was a, one, one of my buddies I talked to him often. He was real into 
invest in. He would, he would, he would have the, he would have the paper out, you know, tell you how long ago this was. He would have a paper out and he would be going through, 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 through the, through the business section. And I couldn't understand, I couldn't read it, but it was one, but he was always talking about investing. So I was always trying to pick his brain, so to speak, because I didn't have all the information of the knowledge that he had. But one guy came as we were talking, he said, give me an investment to make. Meaning that he wants to get, be able to invest one time and be able to make a boatload of money. But where my buddy, he continued to work at it, he continued to work at it. And so, so it was not a one time thing. It was not a one time thing. And verse 16 says, then the first, the, then came the first saying, Lord, thy 10 pounds have, have gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well done thy good servant because thou hast been faithful in the very little th have thou authority over ten cities verse 18 says the second servant came saying lord thy pounds have gained five pounds and he said likewise to him be thou also over five cities and another came saying lord behold here is thy pounds which i which i have kept laid up in a napkin mean that he hid what the lord had gave he hid what was given to him and verse 24 says for i fear thee because thou art an august man thou takest up and thou layest not down and, and, and reapest thou what thou did not sow and he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an unjust man, taking up and laying not down and reaping that I have not sown. Therefore, thou, thou givest not thou my money unto the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usefully or interest and he said unto unto them that stood by take from him the pounds and give it unto him that have ten pounds and he said unto him lord he have had ten pounds and verse 26 says for i say unto you that unto every one which which had which shall be given from him and he has not that he shall be taken away away from him and verse 27 says but thou but thou, but thou my enemies which would not that i should reign over them bring them hither and slay them before me here's the principle boys friend here's the principle my performance in the family determines my position in the kingdom so, 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 so as we see, as we see, as we see the, 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 this parable that Jesus taught, that how their performance in the family determined, notice, notice the language he used to reign with them. So to reign, he gave them, he gave the one ten cities, he gave the one five cities. Why? Well, because, because see, my, see, understand this, sports fan. Understand, see, the things that you and I are doing now in the family, in the family of God, will determine, guess what, our position in the kingdom i think i told you on last week that 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 you and i are filling out our resume for our position in the kingdom you are you and i are auditioning and so i, I remember growing up and and, and and one of my best friends he thought that he could sing a little bit and so so we had one of them neighborhood groups and so i think some of y'all remember and so he was auditioning for his neighborhood group and so and so uh, so word got around that, that 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 my boy he kind of bombed out at the audition <laughs> he didn't do he didn't do he didn't make it into the group so but i'm saying now so you and i are working towards what our position in the kingdom why because this is the principle that i really want you to get a hold of my performance in the family will determine my position in the kingdom okay now let's turn with me turn with me to revelation chapter number five and verse 10. revelation chapter 5 and 10. revelation 5 and 10 and 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 it says 
and he hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And so notice this language. So he shall, he shall make us unto our God kings and priests. What's a kings and priests? A priest is what a particular has a, has a special connection with God. I told you before what a priest, again, he speaks to God on behalf of the people, means that he can go into the innermost. He can go into that, but, all, but, but he may as a king and a priest, mean that you and I are designed to reign, but, but determines if you and I are going to reign or not, determines our position or not, if, if we, uh, my, 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 my things that I do, my performance in the family will determine, again, my position in the kingdom. Now, now, now turn, turn in Revelations, again, um, chapter number 20 and verse number 6. Revelation 20 and 6. And it says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. A thousand years. And so, so notice again, we see this reigning and we see a thousand years. What was what a thousand years? Remember, we talked about this before. What is the millennial kingdom? And so when Christ comes back, there's going to be some judgment. Then we're going to be ushered in into millennial kingdom. And the Bible talks about that Jesus is going to rule with a Ryan R, meaning that he's going to be a righteous dictatorship. It's going to be a righteous dictatorship. And so, and, and so, so, but, but, but we're going to be getting reign with him for a thousand years. And so now let me take you just a little bit further. And so we see in Revelation 22, 1 through 5, and it says, Revelation chapter number 22, starting in verse number 1, and it says, And he showed me a pure river of life, crystal as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the streets of it, on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manna of fruit, and yielding her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And verse 4 says, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their forehead, and, and there shall be no day there, and they, and, and they need no, no idol, neither light nor the sun, for the Lord giveth the light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And so now let, 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 let's put this together. So we saw, and so first of all, let, 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 let me remind you, remember we talked about the outline or the timeline of Revelation. Chapter 1 through 5 is what highlights the church. Chapter 6 through 19, what deals with the, the tribulation. Chapter number 20 de deals with the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Christ, and also judgment. And chapter 21 and 22 deals with the new heaven and the new earth. So, so we saw that in verse, in, in, in verse 5, which deals with the church, he's talking about we, we shall reign with him. I mean, he's talking about the church. And so, and so notice that at the end, at verse, at verse, at chapter 20, he's talking about that we shall reign with him in the millennial kingdom. But watch this now. But not only, not only is, is, is my, my performance in the family turn my position in the millennial kingdom, but notice he says in chapter 22, <clears throat> he said that we shall reign with him, what, forever and ever. And so, so I will submit to you, guess what? That, that the position that I'm granted in the millennial kingdom is going to carry over throughout eternity. Meaning, meaning guess what? If, 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 if I go into millennial kingdom 
and, and I, I don't get time off for good behavior. So, 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 so therefore, if I go into the millennial kingdom, guess what? Not enter into a, 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 a entry level position. I have an entry level position in the kingdom. Guess what? Just because I do a good work, my, my, my position is sealed. See, that, 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 that's good news that they can pray. Why? Because I can't take your position. I, <laughs> I, can't, earn, I, can't, I can't earn enough points where I can take over. So, so, so whatever position that you and I are granted in the millennial kingdom, it's going to carry over into eternity. It's going to carry over. And, and, and so, and so, so but, but understand, so it's not going to change. It's going to be totally fixed. So, so this is good news for some of us. But it's bad news for, 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 for those that, that are going to bust hell wide open. Because guess what? Because how you enter into the millennial kingdom is going to carry over into eternity. And so, and, so, and so this is why it behooves you and I, as we talk about, as we talk about when we started this, to be faithful. To be the faithful servant. To be the, to be the faithful one. And so many times, many times... You know, it's hard for us, if the truth be told, it's hard for us to continue to be faithful when we don't see like that I'm getting anywhere. I think I shared with you the story that, that once upon a time, and so I was not very good at, 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 at spit shining my boots. I was not very, very good at it. And so, so, so I, would, I, would, I would get the rag, you'd get the rag, and you would wrap it around your finger, and you would get a little water, and you would dip it in the water, and you would dip it in the polish, and you would have to work it, and you have to work it, and you have to work it. And so, so I'm here trying to work it, and trying to work it, and trying to work it, but I'm not seeing any, any benefit. I'm not seeing any progress. So I'm spending, so my hand is hurting, my arm is hurting, I'm, I'm tired of doing this, but I'm not getting anywhere. And so I said that the many times, many times, see, as you and I are striving to be faithful in the kingdom, striving to be faithful to the things that God has placed in our hand, many times because I don't see any results. Many times, maybe the truth is, maybe I'm not getting any appreciation for the things that I'm doing. Maybe it seems like, like, like that, that people that are not even trying to live right, they seem to be benefiting. They seem to be blessed. And so, so many times, that can be such a discouragement. But I want somebody to remember that, guess what? My performance right now, my performance in the kingdom, the thing that I'm doing right now in the family, the thing that I'm doing, guess what? I don't do it primarily for a reward. I do them, guess what? Because I love the Lord. Because I, I love the Lord. There, there, there's a story told. There's a story told of a, of a lady. She married a man and that, 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 she, that, that she loved. And they had a, they had a romance and that, that they got married. But this man, he gave his wife, she was a stay-at-home wife, he gave his wife, she had this list of the things that she had to do every day. These things that she had to do every day. And so she's doing these stuff. So it made her miserable because why? Because every time her husband walked in, he would go down the list. Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? And so and so so finally so so but what happened that the man died. That the man died. That the man died. And so 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 lady, as time went on, the lady decided that she was gonna go on a on a cruise. So she went on a cruise and she met another man, and this man was, was wonderful, and they had a courtship and they, they got married and and they were living together and so and so the one day she 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 was cleaning up the comparing and she found this list in the drawer and as she looked at the list she said that she, that with the first husband she did it out of duty but she was doing these things for the second husband out of devotion so, so, so many times, so watch me now. So sometimes, see, see, I can it seem like that I'm doing so I don't do things out of duty. But I do things out of devotion. I do things I love. I understand this. See, 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 see. I don't go to church because I'm a Christian. I, I go to church because that's what Christians do. I don't, I don't pray. Why? Because I'm trying to get God's blessing. I pray because this is what believers do. See, I don't study my word because I'm trying to get some points. And so, so we're, we're going to get to it later how the Bible talks about. You know, five crowns that, that, that believers are going to be given, these different categories. But guess what? The Bible says that when we get the crowns, we're going to fall on at Jesus' feet saying he was the only one that's worthy to receive honor and to receive praise. Why? Because, why? because I really want you to see that we do things not necessarily out of duty. 
I don't, we don't do things necessarily to get a reward, necessarily to get out of package on the back, but we do it. Why? Because we love the Lord, as the psalm said. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. And so I won't take it back, but I really want you to see that how these things, how my, my performance in the family, guess what, will determine my position in the kingdom. So now let, let, let's shift gears but just a little bit, Jeff gears for just a little bit, the judgment that I should be concerned with. First of all, let's look at the judgment of the wicked, the judgment of the wicked. And we find that in Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse number 11, Revelation 20 and 11. And it says, and I saw a, a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose the face of the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in them and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire this is the second death and verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in to hell. So let's unpack this for just a moment. And so we see that this great white throne coming down. And so we so so we see that everybody, so, so people are summoned before the judge. So it says the books were open. And says another book was open, which is the book of life. And so 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 Dr. Schofield described this like this. He said that in the book of life, and so I don't know it's true, but, but, but it's, it's logical. He said in the book of life is a place where everybody's name should go, meaning that you have your space. And so when you are saved, when, 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 you, you, when, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, when you are truly saved, your name gets written in your space. So when, so when Jesus opens up this book and he looks for, 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 for lonesome space. <laughs> and the lonesome, so there's not, name is not in the book. Guess what? He's cast so I, I can be a good talker. I, 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 I can think that I can talk myself out of anything. But the Bible says, guess what? If my name is not written in the book, guess what? I'm cast into hell. I'm cast in, 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 into hell. We're going to get to it in a moment, but guess what? See, Christians are not at this judgment. Why? Because our, say, our eternal state has already been sealed. Why? Because we've already confessed with our mouth and believed in our heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him on the third day. And so, but, but, but notice, but, but watch me now. So we see the book of life, but notice it says, and these books. So it talks about the book of life, but it talks about and these books. So you see, see watch this now. So as, as so so now as these books are going to be open, meaning that these are the things that we that people have done in this life. But understand, guess what? That if you're saved, guess what? Your slate has been wiped clean. And so uh, and so, but but if I'm not saved, then he's going to open up these books. And this is going to determine, watch this now, sports fan. This is going to determine the level of hell that a person enters. See, see, understand this, understand this. See, see there are levels to prison. So, 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 so I don't know, I don't know too much about prison. So, but, but, and so, but I understand, but, but when you first go, that, 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 what they call the jail or the holding place. In the meantime, this is where you go to be held, where you're going to, where you got to go before the judge or, or where sometimes if, uh, sometimes if you're, 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 you're been fighting at night, they'll put you in there, they'll let you sleep it off. And so this is a temporary place. But then after that, it's, it's, it's called the, the, the prison. And so, and so, so, so you have a minimum security, you have maximum security, and you have solitary confinement. See, they're all in the prison. They're all in the jail, but they're different levels. 
And so guess what? So when, when, when God opens up these books to determine the thing that you have done, and look, notice what it says, there's going to be no escaping. He said that hell is going to give up, the, the sea is going to give up. So, 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 you're going to, so, so guess what? If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to be before this great white throne. But guess what? So, 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 so if, if you're there, and you see this great white throne coming down, guess what? You in trouble. <laughs> you, you, are, you are in trouble. So that's why I behoove you now to make sure, as Isaiah said, to get your house in order. And so, so, so we see, so we see the, the different books are going to be opening and people are going to be judged. This is going to determine the level of hell that you're in. See, so you see, just like we, we're going to get to it in a moment, just like heaven is not all the same, there's going to be different levels, but there are different levels of hell. There, 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 there's jail, there, there, there's prison, there, there, there's maximum security, there, there, there's federal, there, there, there's solitary confinement. So there's all these things, but, but there, so it's going to determine. So the, the level of hell that a person enters into. Now let's let's shift gears a minute. I gave you the bad news, but let's look at the good news. We, we looked a little bit about it on, on last week, but turn to me with me, Second Corinthians chapter number five and verse number ten. Second Corinthians first chapter number five and ten. So Second Corinthians five and ten. And it says, real quick, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So it's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. And so this, this is really translated as the Bema seat. And so back back in the first century, they had a thing that was called the Isthmian Games, which which later developed into the Olympic Games. And so and so, so 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 as as the runner, as whoever, it would be a high platform, and they would run by, and they would be judged how they ran, did they stay in their lane, and, and they would be rewarded according to how they competed in athletic events. And this is the picture that we get. And so, so I, I'm reminded, and so, so, so Deacon Perry can attest to this, that, that many times, you know, in, in the military, I can speak of, of the army that you would have what is called a, a parade or a change of command many times. And so as a change of command that we would, the soldier would be out there and, 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 and you have to stand and, and they have everybody, everybody in their mother that wants to talk, that they want to have a speech. And so, but you got to stand out there and be, they always did it in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be out there in the winter, I mean, in the summer, in the heat, and, and so you can't move, and so you got to be standing there. You got to show that, that you're disciplined, and so we're talking all this, so you go through all this, and so sometimes people are falling out, and so you got to go, then, then, they, then they get up and say, you know, pass a review. And so everybody will start, they'll march by the, the podium where the general, whoever, will be at the podium, and they'll see if everybody dressed right, so it means that he'll judge. The people, he'll judge how, how you march, how you stay alive, how disciplined you are to go into something. And this is kind of picture that we get. And so how, how we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I mean, he's going to be there to judge. But, 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 this is, but this is the Christian judgment. Again, notice what it says. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that one may receive the things what done in his body. I mean, the things done since you were saved. The, since you were saved, because we go, before you got saved, before the thing that we've done before we got saved, those get wiped clean. So now it's a thing that we have done in the body. And notice what it says, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Now, 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 now keep that in mind, and let's turn to 1 Corinthians. We looked at this one last week, but, but let's turn to 1 Corinthians, and let's look at in verse number 12, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 12, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 12, and it says, Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed 
by fire. And again, remember that fire always in the Bible, it typifies what judgment. So my worst, so remember the old song we used to sing, I, I've been tried in the fire and I shall come forth what as pure gold. And so fire determines again as, as the goldsmith will put the gold into the oven as he puts the heat to it, the sludge and impurities will raise to the top and he'll swipe that off and then he'll raise to the top and he'll swipe meaning so that at the end of, at the end of the process he can get some pure gold. So what so so our, our our work, the thing that you and I have done in the body, since we believe that they're gonna be tried in the fire, meaning that, that, that God is gonna see if they're genuine now. He's gonna reveal how genuine see see you see I, I told you before see 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 you may think see 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 God will judge my motives. God will judge my motives, say, why am I preaching this gospel? Do I preach this gospel? Why? Because, 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 because I want the best seat in the sanctuary. Do I preach this gospel? Why, 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 why? Because I want the accolade. Do I preach this gospel? Or do I do it because I'm called? Because I have a, because God has given me a gift and a bill because I'm doing it to serve God and his people. See, see, guess what? You may not be able to determine my motives. But God, as he takes my work, the thing that I do through the fire, he can determine the motives of why did I do the thing that he did. So, see, see, guess, see, 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 guess what? So why, so why did a person be, why was a person deacon? Why is a person singing on a choir? Is it that they want to get accolades? Is it they want to get recognized? Or did they have a truly desire to worship the Lord in spirit and also in truth? And so, 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 many times, so, 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 as we go through the fire, but no way says he said, gold, silver, and precious stones, these are things that cannot be burned up. But it says wood, hay, or stubble. And some translation says straw. So, wood, hay, or stubble, these are things that when you put to the fire, that they are burnt up. But, but notice what it says, verse, verse 13 says that every man's work shall be manifest or made plain and made clear. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed again by fire. And fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And verse 14 says, And if any man's work abide, he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt up, he shall suffer loss, but him himself shall be saved, yet as so by fire. And so again, again, I, I talked to you a little bit about at work and how a place I call the Isle of Shame. And so guess so, so I may be, I may be doing whatever it is that I feel that I'm doing for God, and I may do it just for accolade, just for pats on the back. Just, just because I want to get recognized, or maybe I'm trying to do it because I'm trying to line my pockets or whatever. But guess what? That when, when God put the fire to it, when God put the judgment to it, he's going to reveal not just that God's going to know. See, 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 let, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. And so both of my children, both of my children, they will swear you down that the other one is my favorite. <laughs> they will, they will, but both of them will swear you down. Why? Because many times what I did when I dealt with them, I dealt with them one on one. Uh, when I pulled them up, I, I did, I did. The other one, many times didn't know about it. I, so when I, so I dealt with them one on one. So because the other one never saw it, they said, "Well, Daddy never gets after you because why? Well, I never saw it, but I dealt with them one on one. So that's why they both will swear you down." probably to their grave, that the other one was their father's favorite. Why? Because, but, but, but God is not going to do that. God is going to, when it comes to judgment, everybody's going to see. Everybody's going to see, and many times we're going to suffer that loss, but guess what? We're still going to make it into heaven. And so again, as we saw before, guess what? That, that, that hell has levels. But also, heaven 
has levels. And so as we saw, even that I shall reign with him, meaning that a level in the millennial kingdom is going to carry over into all of eternity. And so this is, is going to be my position throughout all eternity. But, but note what he says, that I, I may suffer loss because why? I may be embarrassed. I may, I may, I, my, my motives, my true motives are going to be revealed. Guess what? I may have fooled you. I may have fooled everybody else. But, but there's going to come a time when my true motives will be revealed and, and, and that judgment is going to be fixed and so throughout all of eternity I'm going to have to deal with the things maybe that I fail to do. I'm going to have to deal with my false motives. See, I may think or you and or people may think that they're getting away with the things that they're doing now in the earth. But guess what? God is going to put every. See, guess what? If you did it for the wrong reason, you're going to be there on the Isle of Shame. You're going to be there. And so and, and everybody's going to be able to see that the thing that you did, and just like, just like we, saw, we saw a couple weeks ago, that you're going to have your place with the hypocrites, with those that were playing a role. That's why it behooves you and me to be real with one another, but more importantly, to be real with God. And so, and so sometimes, yes, admit to God, God, I'm not feeling it today. Yes, admit God, I'm struggling today. You can just admit that, that God, this is a hard thing for me to do. But guess what, God, I am gonna trust you. Even when I can't see you, God, I am going to trust you and I'm going to continue to strive to walk in spirit and also in truth. And so finally, finally, as we prepare to put a period here, I'm turning with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and let's look at Sunday verse number 24. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. And it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temporal in all things now, but do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible and verse 26 says, And I therefore so run not as uncertainty, so fight not as one that, that beateth the air, but I keep under my body to bring it under subjection, that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And so watch this now. So watch this. So notice what he says. So, so again, we have this whole image of this demacy, of this athletic contest going on. And so, so he says, so, so, so he said, I run, you know, not, not, not to receive a prize that I may obtain it. But he talks about a, 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 a temporary. So remember, see, in the whole image, they still do this in the Olympics. They, 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 they run this race, you know, they're the fastest on the planet. And, and they don't put a crown on their head. They put this little reef around their head to symbolize. And so again, this reef is going to fit. It's going to fade. It's going to wither. It's, it's going to die. And so, so that, 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 that driving to obtain something that's going to be perishable. But guess what? But as you and I are working in this thing, as you and I are running the race that God has called us to race. And so and he also says what? A fight, a box. As one that, 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 not one that beateth the air, but guess what? There's a purpose in it. See, sometimes in this life, sometimes as you and I are doing what God has told us to do, sometimes it just feels like I'm, I'm just beating the air. I'm just, I'm just wasting my time. I'm just wasting all this energy because nothing is going to amount out of this. But guess what? If I understand that, that the thing that I'm doing on this side of the Jordan, that they're earning me positions in, in the kingdom, if I'm doing these things just to please him, as we saw before, guess what? He's going to put fire to the things that you and I do, and it's going to determine my motives. It's going to determine the reason that, 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 I did, that, that I did these things. And so verse 26, therefore I run not as uncertainly, so I fight not as one that beats the air, but guess what? But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection that by any means when I have preached to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. Here it is. Here it is. See, a castaway meaning to be unqualified. So, 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 so Paul is saying it's possible for me to preach to others and I myself would be disqualified for my rewards. Um, so, 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 but I, so I think I told you, if you ever watch, if you ever watch, it always happens, if you ever watch one, one of the, the, the movies about the rapture, there's, there's always a scene in it where, 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 where these people have disappeared because they've been raptured up and they're trying to figure out what happened to all these people? Where are all these people? And always the, 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 this, this preacher stands up and he begins to explain to him what happened. He began to explain to him about the rapture and about all this. And this, he walks him all through the whole thing. And then, then, then somebody will look at him, look at this preacher and say, excuse me, and say, what happened to you? He will say, I preached it, but I didn't believe it. And so why? Because he became unqualified. He became, in King James language, a castaway. Because after he had led others, see, 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 and the, the ironic thing about that whole thing is that he preached to others and, and led others to the, the, into the kingdom, but him, himself, he missed out. So this is why, guess what, that you and I not only can need to do the thing that God has placed us to do, but we need to have the right motives and the right concern so, so that we would not be a castaway, so we would not be unqualified. But And, and please understand this, if we understand this, that, that, that my, that, that, that my the thing that I do in the family will determine my position in the kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we do thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we do thank you, God, for what you are in our lives on today. God, we thank you, God, for this lesson. God, we thank you, God, for these, these scriptures. Uh, God, we thank you, God, that you thought enough of us not, not only to say it, but to write it down, God, that we could study it. Even, God, that we live in a time and a day where we're going to have your scriptures in our favorite translation to help us to understand what you're saying unto us. And so, Father God, help us to apply these truths unto our life, oh God, so not only we would do the things that you're placing our hand to do, but Father, we would have the right motives and the right concern, and God, that we would truly love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and we would even begin, oh God, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you. And we all say, Amen.